my class, in this video, I'm going to show you how thyroid hormone is made. So to understand the, pro um, the production of the thyroid hormone, you kind of have to really understand what turns it on, uh, what are the items that goes into um, making thyroid globulin, and what are the, each of the steps, and what is the factory, the, the, the actual place where thyroid hormone is produced. So this is the main slide looking at thyroid hormone production, but you wanna take a look at where it is produced, what is the factory. So here I've drawn just a real stick figure um, of the blood, the cells, the follicle cells, and the colloid, and I have a little schematic here. So if you remember, we learned about the follicle cells making a circle, the colloid, and then the blood next to it. So if you go back to the histology of um, the thyroid gland, here you can see we're looking at one of these purple little cells. One of these little purple cells, those are the thyroid follicle cells or follicle cells, okay? And they form a circle, almost like holding hands, making a little circle. And inside is a space. It's not a cell, it's a space called the colloid. And around these cells are numerous blood vessels. So you can see the numerous blood vessels, okay? And all this tissue is part of the thyroid gland. So if you look, go back to look at the production of the thyroid hormone, this is the schematic. So we're looking at the blood vessel next to the follicle cell and the colloid space. And now, of course, there are multiple steps at which this is made. So you want to really read this, understand this, follow the picture. I highlighted the green steps all the way along, okay, to the production of thyroid hormone. Sometimes I like to just draw a simplified diagram so you can see the big picture a little bit better. So let's take a look at um, doing that. Okay, so like I said, we're looking at the follicle cell. So we're gonna just have a, almost like a, uh, you know, it's a circle, circular cell here, but I'm just gonna draw a square. So this will be the follicle. Okay, so this is the follicle cell. And next to the follicle cell is blood. So blood is circulating around the follicle cells. Okay, uh, so this is blood. And the follicle cells, so there'll be multiple follicle cells, right? So you imagine this and you're continuing into a circle. Next to the follicle cell will be the colloid, okay? So this will be the colloid space. Um, let me just use this blue. Okay, so this is the colloid space. Okay, so let's connect this with what we already learned from the previous unit is that we have the hypothalamus, right? So we know of the hypothalamus in the brain here, and then we have the anterior pituitary. And here, amplified in large drawing here is the thyroid, so HPT axis. So we already know that we have um, TRH, TRH secreted by the th hypothalamus to um, bind to the pituitary gland to make TSH. So TSH is sent into the blood. Okay? Well, that TSH in the blood is going to bind to the TSH receptor. Sorry, there's a lag on my pen again. Probably slowing things down. Okay, so this is the TSH receptor. So what we know is that we have TSH binding to this receptor. Okay, so that's my step one. Okay. When the TSH binds to the thyroid gland, it is stimulating it, telling it to make more thyroid hormone. 
So with that, what it's doing is it's telling the follicle cells make more thyroid hormone. What the follicle cell does first when they get that signal is make thyroglobulin and put it into um, the colloid. So thyroglobulin is made here and stored here, okay? Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate. It's very difficult to write fast in this thing. Um, so this will be step two. So you keep on, the more stimulation you get, the more thyroglobulin is going to be produced and stored. Okay, that's an important point to understand. And this is where it kind of ends, right? If you don't have the next item on the list. So the next item on the list is a very important item, iodine. Iodine comes from the food you eat, but we also get it from iodized salt. So this is why your salt is iodized, okay? So iodine coming from the food you eat and iodized salt is a step three. This becomes a critical connection between two and the rest of the steps. Iodine is transported from the blood through the follicle cells into the colon. Okay, so this is all step three. Let me make sure, yes. So step three, with iodine present, okay, thyroglobulin plus the iodine, um, yes, plus this iodine, the two together, you now have thyroglobulin plus iodine. Okay, and this is going to be then possible to transport out of the cell and the follicle cells then convert it to T3 and T4. The T3 and the T4 literally stands for three iodine and four iodine. So without iodine, you really cannot get to this cell. So now you have T3 and T4 as step five. And now T3 and T4 moves into the blood as step six, and we have T3 circulating the blood and T4 circulating in the blood. And this is going to go to target cells, right? Into cells all over your body, onto the mitochondria and affect my, my metabolism. So you can see how the steps that produce all this, okay? So let's think of a couple scenario right now, okay? So one thing is, okay, so you should have this drawing, right? Now I'm gonna mark it all up. Let's take a highlighter. So what if you don't have food with iodine? So you're missing step three. If you're missing step three, can you then get to step four, five, and six, and seven? Okay, so think about it. If you can't get to step six and seven, what happened to the level of thyroglobulin? Right? Thyroglobulin will build up in the colloid. Okay? Let's also look at this idea of feedback. Remember the T3 and T4, once there is enough, that is what's feeding back, right, in the blood, circulating in the blood, going back to the pituitary and the hypothalamus. So this is also doing the negative feedback to turn off TSH. What if you never got to that point? If you never got to that point, what would the hypothalamus and the pituitary be experiencing? Are they thinking there's T3, T4, or there's no T3, T4? If there's no T3 and T4, what is the hypothalamus and the pituitary going to do? It's going to send out command and say, make more, make more, make more. So because there's high levels of TSH binding to T, uh, T, 
the TSH receptor on the follicle cells, as you let this become, the thyroid globulin becomes build up and build up over time, making an enlarged colloid and also an endemic goiter. Then the thyroid gland becomes visible and can even be balloon out quite large. Okay, so that's a that's a way to think about all that all that idea behind behind the iodine deficiency. Okay, you also want to then think about. Let me go back to a blank document. Oh, sound that got erased, but it's okay. So let's think about now when you have this pathway and now you're using the treatment of radioactive. So I kind of wanted to look at that. So you're taking the medicine, med, to treat an overactive thyroid, overactive follicle cell. So what they're importing in is I-131. Through the pill, you're taking I-131 into the blood. The I-131 is going to come into the cell. It's radiation, okay? So that's radioactive iodine, and then the cell gets destroyed. So this whole process then is destroyed, okay? So would that matter if you have high TSH or, like Graves' disease, antibody that stimulates the follicle cell if the follicle cells are not? So really think about all those questions, their practice and all, and here as well, practicing the thyroid hormone production. And then in the next um, unit, you talk about I-131 therapy. So that will kind of help you with the understanding of that as well. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.